Good morning, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to be here because we are on the forefront of something that is really spectacular, something that started in District 30 under our wonderful superintendent, Dr. Composto, New York City Kids Rise. I am one of many principals in District 30. Um, I am the principal of PS85, and I have many of my colleagues here that are going to share some of their experiences and their insights, but I want to make sure that I share some tidbits with you about New York City Kids Rise. Um, <clears throat> we want to welcome you with um, an idea that started about getting every child ready for college and career ready. What an amazing idea. And to know that there were corporations that backed us and believed in this idea. Now, five years ago, we learned that District 30 was awarded this amazing opportunity. And it has been just that, an amazing opportunity. The vision of the program that as public schools in New York City, we will have a financial asset to prepare our students to be college and career ready. So far, over 13,000 students have been impacted with, just think about that. Think, it started in kindergarten. And so far, they have received approximately $67,000. Where else does that happen? You know, um, and we are so pleased that we have this program in District 30. But what, is, what it is that we have to remember, that our children are thinking about their future. Their parents are thinking about college. They are thinking about college beginning in kindergarten. And it is a program that tells them that there are possibilities. And with that said, uh, I just want to take this time to thank you for coming, for joining us, for, you know, for, for a moment to learn more about New York City Kids' Rights. I have several of my colleagues here, and um, I'm going to go across quickly, and they're going to introduce themselves. I have right at the far end. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dominic Armano, and I'm the very proud principal of PS84 in District 30. Um, and the Save for College program is one of our best and most favorite partnerships at the school. Um, and again, it's just really an honor to be here, and it's just amazing what they built, and I'm just so excited that every single student in New York City has this opportunity. Naomi. Hi, uh, my name is Naomi Huang, a proud founding principal for PS361Q. We opened seven years ago in a very diverse uh, school community. We serve uh, probably over 50 different cultural backgrounds. Uh, despite the changing neighborhood and changing demographics in our school, we are still a Title I school serving uh, mostly immigrant families, right? So what this program has done is it really give an opportunity for our families to, to spark this really important com conversation uh, that they may not have had um, you know, as an immigrant family, right? So as a child of an immigrant family too, I have to say that uh, this program and just the, the conversation that it starts uh, in the home, uh, in it changes the trajectory of each child. So we really believe that it's important uh, for us, no matter how difficult it may be or many pieces that there have been. Uh, Dr. Composto, our superintendent, always has been pushing us all along this time. And, and we do believe as principals that it is difficult, <laughs> but uh, it is really worth it because it's, it's about every child getting that opportunity um, as a family together. Annalis? Good morning, my, <clears throat> my name is Onalis Hernandez. I am the principal at PS 149Q in Jackson Heights. Uh, my school is also in a diverse community, but my school is about 85, 86% Latino immigrants, um, below poverty line, 100% free lunch. And I'm very proud to say that um, we have $95,900 saved in our accounts, and that's... <laughs> 
And that's with less than 500 <laughs> students. So imagine the power of just being able to be ready for college and, and having our students at such a large age talking about things that I myself as a child of immigrant parents but did not have access to until I was in college or even beyond there. That, they, that we are offering our students and our families an opportunity that were not offered to, to us because we, would, we didn't have that, that opportunity to say, hey, you can be more than just, not that there's anything wrong with community workers, we have our community heroes, but that we can see the scientists and the engineers and thinking beyond that, that, that horizon that we see, like just going beyond that box. So our students are doing that because of this program and our families can see that they can regardless of what life has dealt them. So this is an amazing opportunity and we hope that, like Naomi said, it is a lot of work, but when you see that you share your experience, you talk about it, you let them know what it means for you and what can happen, it, it is transformational for our kids and for our community. Thank you, Thank you. Dion. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dion Jagan. I am the principal of Community School 111. We are in the jewel of Long Island City. One of the things that makes um, our school, along with uh, my colleagues in District 30, is the Save for College program. The Save for College program has become part of the fabric of Community School 111. We often talk about being college and career ready, but isn't it wonderful to have that really backed by something tangible and something real that the students and the parents can see. They can sign into their bank accounts and see that the community is behind them by all the money that's being donated, the money that they're depositing into their accounts, and the conversation begins in the school it continues at home and it is reinforced again in the school by everyone in our community, by our community school organizations, myself, our teachers, our office staff, our operations staff, our school-based support team. Everyone in the school is extremely knowledgeable of how the building blocks work and can support all of the scholars and parents in our school. And when you're in a school, especially as a school leader, and I know we're talking to a lot of school leaders today, you have to be the one that sets that expectation and to believe in the program and then it reverberates through the school. And I think as a school, as a community, as an as a district, we've done that profoundly. So we just want to thank, of course, Dr. Composto for reinforcing the importance of building community, Deborah Ellen, the Gray Foundation, and everyone that has supported NYC Kids Rise. And we're proud to be here and extremely honored to share our steps with making this program viable in schools. So thank you. Now, now the executive director, Miss Deborah Ellen Glickstein. Uh, good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much to everyone for being here. Special thanks to Principal Gordon Chang, who is the best. <laughs> She is the CSA chair for District 30. She is the vice president of this association. And what she does every day in Astoria is just, just, just such a, such a um, inspiration to all of us. So thank you so much. Um, I also just want to thank personally also Dr. Gimpasto, our superintendent who has already been recognized, but just <laughs> none of this would be possible without him. So thank you so much, Dr. Gimpasto. I want to just give a little bit of context. So we worked um, for the about, it's been about five years in the communities of School District 30. And we have worked with 39 schools and we have some of the all-star principals here this, today from our community um, who have built this alongside this. And I see Ms. Harvey, another all-star principal <laughs> here today in the audience from School District 30. Um, and I think I see uh, Principal Geller in the back there, also PS 166 there. So it is just um, such an honor to be with so many friends from District 30 who have built this from the absolute beginning. And so as uh, Ms. Gordon Chang mentioned, we have more than 13,000 students with scholarship accounts from just School District 30 alone. That's 96% of first, second, third, and fourth graders across the most diverse school districts in the city that now have a financial resource for their college or career. And so this is something I know we all share great pride in and this would not be possible without every single um, uh, school and school leader. Um, and so that is really why we wanted to be here today at this conference to make sure that as this program is now citywide, 
This is the first year, thanks to the incredible work of so many people, that every kindergartner who chooses to participate in this program will have a college and career account for their futures. And so all of you sitting in this room who are, you know, wherever you are in the city, you all, your kindergartners, in about a month or so, are going to have this uh, New York City scholarship account unless their family decided that they did not want to participate. Um, in School District 30, as, um, as we sort of started to talk about, about $7, $7 million has been accumulated across those 13,000 accounts. And so, of course, depending on the size of the school, how many students there are, it will just, it will just depend on what those children would have there. Um, but we're going to get more into the nitty gritty here because given this is the first year, we want to make sure you all have as much information as possible and there is no one better to share sort of how it actually works than, of course, the, the schools and the principals who built this from the beginning. So with that, um, I know we did a little bit of introductions already, so I'm going to sort of just jump into a lot of sort of the tactical pieces of this. Um, and then there's going to be much time for questions. So um, I would also actually, before I even jump in, I want to orient you to your, um, your, your tote bags here. The tote bags are very important. Uh, the tote bags are part of the experience. Um, in your tote bags, there's a couple things here. The most important thing for this moment is going to be this money in the tote bags. This is something that all your schools will be receiving many, we call these money tree leaves, but many leaves in the next few weeks, you're gonna be receiving these and you're gonna be receiving your very own money tree, which um, was hanging in the back momentarily and now um, it is gonna be, it's okay, I'll, I'll okay. Okay. Um, I, uh, it was hanging in the back, we're gonna hold it up right now so you all can see this money tree. This is what every school will be getting delivered in the next few weeks. Um, and these leaves are going to be very important. So feel free during this presentation to take these leaves out. There's also a box of crayons. Feel free to start coloring in, do whatever, whatever moves you here, <laughs> but make sure you put the name of your school community on this because we're going to make a collective money tree at the end of this and just put it up there so we can have a memory of this and we're going to actually take a photo together at the end of the session. Um, in addition, in the, in the bag, you also have a PowerPoint presentation. The good news is we're not going to go through the PowerPoint presentation, but that you have it um, so that you're going to be able to reference it um, and some other Q&A materials um, if you have additional questions. All right, so with that, I am now going to turn it back to this illustrious panel, and we are going to start with Principal Jagan from PS111 um, and ask you, Ms. Jagan, so what are the steps that you took as a school leader, really to integrate the Save for College program into PS111? Sure. Um, the first thing I did was, um, of course, attend the inf information session. And then I wanted to orient myself to the building blocks. So I learned how to um, complete each building block myself. And then we built it out into the school community. I met with the office staff, the secretary particularly, and we met and we learned the building blocks. Um, Deborah Ellen and her team, they're extremely hands-on. They come into the school and they work with the staff. I wanted to make sure that everyone who answered the phone and spoke to a kindergartner, first grade, second grade, third, now fourth grade parent can get those accounts started. So you want to make sure everyone who's answering your phone can mention it and get those um, accounts activated. You want to have meetings that are action-oriented. After that, we started talking to our lead CBO, our community-based organization, we wanted to make sure the PTA, the CBO director, also knew how to activate <coughs> the accounts. Then we broke it into the teachers. We used parent engagement time. Um, we also used parent-teacher conferences to have meetings with the families. We did it on Zoom. We would have breakout rooms. The families would go into rooms. We'd have leaders in each room having um, the parents activate the accounts. So that was our goal. And um, then we started thinking, you know, we met with everyone except the children. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to meet with the scholars of our school. We explained to them the importance of going to school and the financial responsibility that is alongside that. So we had the scholars create little piggy bank invitations, the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> we, <laughs> our design team designed them. We put it on a paper template. We um, had lessons with them with it. They wrote in their own handwriting the invitations for these parent meetings, gave them to the parents. The parents were also intrigued to receive an invitation from their children, and of course, it brought them to the meetings. Um, I made sure I was all of the N I, I was at all of the NYC um, Kid Rise events, and then we would show the videos. And as you can see, we um, 
have a diverse uh, pa parent population on the video. So parents that might be fearful, that might not speak the language, who may not understand the importance of the bank accounts will see themselves reflected in the videos and it brings down some of the fear. Um, and it's also important to have K-1 and 2 part of the college and career ready conversation. I'm a K-8 to school, so um, most people think we only do it with the middle school. No, at our 529 day, which is May 29th, so it's coming up, so please get mm -hmm. ready for that. Um, career day, and of course, January 11th, which is the college day. We made sure the kindergartners were involved, um, having visits from different universities, um, the universities that our school and teachers represent at the school, and now the kindergartners can have conversations about that. They say, oh no, I have money in my account, the Save for College account, because as I said earlier, it is a fabric of our school. That's perfect. Thank, oh, thank you, you so thank you. much. <laughs> no, that is give a great overview. Of, I can go on and of, on and on. And, and we're going to come back to you. It was perfect. Um, I'm going to turn it now um, to Principal Armano to talk a little bit about how um, your school has integrated the program and also hit on the, um, the, you know, the performance improvement. You got it. Um, so I, I just want to start by saying, you know, this program really became part of my school community. And I think that's the key to its success is a lot of times in education you get like an initiative and it's rolled out and then it kind of just falls to the wayside. But this and the power behind it, we made it part of who we are, part of our college and career readiness. And it's more than just saying we're getting our kids college and career ready, we're actually doing it. So some of the things that we're doing at 84 to kind of get the hype behind this and make it part of our culture is first we started with our professional development for staff. It was very important that the staff members knew and understood what this was, right? So you go to a meeting, they talk to you about being a partner with New York City Kids Rise, but how does that relate to the actual classroom where the work is happening? So what we did was we did PD where we linked it to our curriculum, um, our ELA curriculum and our math curriculum for as low as the kindergarten kids, right? So you talk about needs versus wants. How does that relate to New York City Kids Rise? How does it link to the curriculum that they're using, the books that they're reading? And how does it relate to the New York City Kids Rise curriculum? It's important that you utilize that because they have one and it really does kind of embed very nicely with the existing programs that we have. Um, the next piece is we also then took it a step further. When you talk about culture in a school building, a lot of us throw the word around PBIS, right? We know what PBIS is, that positive behavioral intervention support. So we most recently linked that to our PBIS rewards program with our B-Bucks, where the kids now earn dollars in school and we link that also back to our New York City Kids Rise curriculum, where again, it's saving your money. What are you saving your money for? What, you know, what do you get when you save your money? Do you just blow it in one shot with a cool little pencil in our school <laughs> store? Or do you save it for the bigger prize? Um, the next thing that we do is we do spirit days. We do a lot of spirit weeks, a lot of spirit days. Um, and we always incorporate some aspect of the New York City Kids Rise into the spirit days. It's more than just dress. You know, it's more than just college day on 529 day where you wear that really nice comfy sweatshirt that you had when you were back uh, you know, in your college days. It's more than that. It's dress for success day, dress for your future. Um, and you know, again, part of this whole process that we're talking about is activation, right? So how do you get these families to activate the account, right? That building block one piece. And there's a lot of hesitation there. So one of the things we did was we incentivized it, right? It's just like anything else. So we ran a raffle for a principal of the day. Um, and if you activate your account, you get a raffle, it goes into the raffle, and at the end of it, we pull a name, uh, two, three kindergarten kids, uh, and they get to be the principal of the day. Uh, they get to walk around the principal, make the announcements, authorize extra recess, any of that <laughs> stuff. Um, and again, it gets the kids like super excited. And again, it's just kind of, it's a part of who we are. Um, and it's part of just our own culture. And again, like Dion, I could talk for hours. Although <laughs> she's the school where the president of the United States went to, so I mean, like, let's just, you know, that's. Uh, but uh, but anyway, you know, again, that's kind of some of the stuff we're doing at 84. I love that, and I actually happened to visit during the yeah. principal of a day on 529 day, and seeing that kindergartner, the pride of being the assistant principal of a day, was very special. Um, and also, as that is an option of a career um, in way in the yeah. future, it's pretty awesome. So, um, actually, I just have a quick follow up for you around um, the integration of the Safe for College program into your comprehensive education plan. Yep, yeah. excellent. Yeah, so um, we all know we're all educational leaders or teachers, and, and a big piece of, of our school is the CEP, right? And um, we're actually probably getting to that time now where we have to start working around goals again. Uh, so, one of the things that we did at 84 with my SLT team 
is figure out a way to incorporate the Safer College program into our CEP. Uh, and the best way for us to do that is through the parent and engagement policy, right? So that piece of the CEP is partnering with families. How are you getting them in? And some of the things that we're talking about, uh, the, the idea actually came from the former principal mm -hmm. who could not be at one of our PTA meetings uh, a year ago because he had to go to college night for his daughter. Now his daughter was a junior, she was going to college night, she was looking at colleges. So what we're deciding to do is have a college night as early as kindergarten, right? So obviously our kindergartners are not applying for college, uh, well they will eventually, <laughs> but not in the near future. But again, creating an event where the parents come in, similar to that if you were a high school parent going to a college night, having them come in, talk about the, the, the college and career readiness, talk about New York City Kids Rise, talk about activating the account and why that's important. Um, and again, if you link it to the CEP, um, it just gives you another avenue to really promote this program. Uh, another way you could do it is by creating and developing a whole new area of concentration. Like, we have our ELA areas of concentration, we have our science, our math, I mean, those are the goals we have to have. But if you could actually create a goal, a college and career ready goal, you know, what does this look like for your school community? Uh, again, it kind of just keeps us grounded, it keeps us on the right path, it kind of keeps that trajectory, and at the same time, just gives our kids additional opportunity while also informing our parents so they're behind it 100%. Uh, I love that. And, and just sort of to zoom back out for a bit, following the opt-out period is um, the moment when kids and, well, the students' accounts will actually be available to them, um, which is coming up for this school year. So we expect it to be in about a month or so. Um, and then next year, we expect that that actually will be in January. It's our first year citywide, and so it's a little different this year. Um, and so what happens at that time is that it really, and this is what um, um, Principal Jagan and Principal Armano have spoken about, is that it is the opportunity for schools to work with families to actually activate their accounts. This is really the moment, right? So some families will do this on their own. They won't need the additional support, but what what we've really done is provided this tool for school communities around college and career readiness for their youngest students, and it becomes part of the school's efforts, and this is what we're talking about with the comprehensive plan, to actually work with families directly to make sure that they know that they have this resource. And so when families will do that, they actually earn another $25 into that scholarship account. So it's an initial $100 from NYC Kids Rise, everyone gets, and then families can earn these additional rewards. Um, all right, so I'm now going to turn it over to Principal Huang to talk a little bit about, um, you know, as you mentioned before, you have such a diverse school um, and so many different folks coming together from different different backgrounds and experiences. Um, really, how has the Save for College program helped you um, to bring together to bring together everyone? So, uh, serving a, a diverse community, uh, I guess uh, that are that are mostly immigrant families. One of the fears, uh, I think uh, Deborah had mentioned before, one of the fears was about with, um, I guess, stemming from uh, families that are undocumented, right? So, as they uh, have to provide some private information, where does this go? Could this impact uh, you know us as a family in a negative way? Um, they they've done a wonderful job and have you know, gotten all of that, uh, you know, together. But uh, I think it's really about talking about that and um, and serving them and educating them on um, with different languages, having workshops in different languages as well. So we don't just, uh, we didn't just translate uh, with, a, you know, with someone speaking in English and then translating that, but we, we've actually had workshops in different languages entirely so that they feel comfortable with someone that speaks their language uh, and as families, groups, um, they would uh, be able to ask questions in their own language about this program. Uh, we have a lot of staff on, you know, on site that can speak the languages that, you know, we try really hard to represent our, our um, staff uh, to be representative of the people, the, the community that we serve. But we also had uh, worked with uh, New York Kids Rise uh, who sent um, people that could translate and could just be served in that capacity as well. So I think just having uh, workshops in, in different languages have helped uh, lessen the fear that's been there. Um, having uh, families from the past speak about it on their own terms and what that has done, um, and just uh, success stories uh, of, um, of families that have saved enough for college, uh, that has also uh, been very positive for the school community. 
Um, we've had activities, so thinking in thinking about the purpose of this uh, is really thinking about the trajectory, changing the trajectory of each child to be college bound or to just uh, seek, you know, uh, careers uh, that could uh, that are beyond and just to imagine this, right? So uh, we've had a lot of uh, activities uh, for kids as well as for families uh, in partnership with our CBO that we worked with, with Woodside on the Move. Um, and we've, uh, they have helped us get banks in uh, who could talk further about saving beyond this. It's really not about the $100, right, mm -hmm. that's gonna grow into this. It's really about uh, kind of informing them and informing our families what can be done really to save for college. This is just the start of a conversation, but uh, really helping kids imagine themselves in all these different mm -hmm. and dreams, right, that they have, but also helping families be able to support that uh, starting now in kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. well, that's taking me down memory lane. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> um, and so, um, uh, Principal Hernandez, I wanted to just ask, you know, most of your families speak Spanish at home, and so I wanted to know if there was anything you wanted to sort of add to the, to the exp sort of the, the trust question. Why should families trust this program, and how do you guys, what questions have you received, and how do you mitigate those questions? I think just to build on what Naomi was saying, having a large population of parents that are not documented, <coughs> that presented a, a problem for us. So building the trust, we had to believe in the program as well so that we can support the parents mm -hmm. and walk them through it. And as I listened to my colleagues speaking, I <laughs> was just taking notes and, and just saying one of the things is this idea of working with the foundation and being heard. We all know as leaders how many times directors don't come to us and then it's, you know, like it doesn't fit into our communities, mm -hmm. but we were able to to voice our opinions and speak, and we were heard. So these tra th these um, sessions in native languages is because that's feedback that we as exactly. leaders gave. Yep. Um, having documentation, give, having a support into how to reach out to the community, how to have other banks come in. That all came from our voices. Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, here's a new initiative, do mm -hmm. it, because mm -hmm. we've all come down that road one too many times. We were able to um, advocate for our communities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so because we advocated, our communities believed in us. Mm -hmm. Because um, like Dominic said, then it, it was woven into the fiber of our schools. Mm -hmm. So that at graduation, I could say, hey, listen, I started a 529 for my daughter when I started teaching and teachers just started making $22,000 a year and guess where that went? Nowhere when I had to feed her. And and so here she is now in college, mm -hmm. but guess what? I can pay for a $300 book for her yeah. and it becomes real. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes part of everything we do. And it's mm -hmm. not just activities. It has to be um, like PS 149Q and New York City Rides because it's that reality of um, we have a show, guess what's outside? Don't forget to say, mm -hmm. oh, you love them singing. Mm -hmm. Imagine mm -hmm. what they could do when mm -hmm. they go to college. Sign up for this. So you have to be there. You have to um, have your whole community on board. It's part of staff development, part mm -hmm. of every meeting, part of everything that we do in that sense. But I think that for me, like sharing my journey as, um, like I said, a, a, a product of an immigrant family, um, as a single parent, what um, the little bit that I was able to mm -hmm. do years ago for my daughter, how it helped, it made it real. It made it attainable. So if you have to look at words, it's that idea of possibility. Mm -hmm. You're putting possibility at the forefront of your children. You're putting um, exposure. You're exposing mm -hmm. them to, to, to what can be. So we had the opportunity, a few schools in the district, to be part of uh, the MetLife Foundation, who said, oh, we want to jump on board and we want to give extra money. Mm -hmm. So we want to do um, um, have access to like college days. So we did this remotely. Our third graders were able to sit and and have uh, remote <laughs> college sessions. Mm -hmm. And now they saw people that looked like them and sounded like them and went to were lived lives similar to them. And this year, when we did Dress to Impress Day um, in January, um, and again, I, we we had our, always have our police officers and our teachers, and they're so important. But this year, we had more than ever scientists and engineers and 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 scientists that really didn't don't speak a lot of english but came with a jar 
with something in there that I still don't know what it was and don't <laughs> care to. But he brought it to school because it was important, right? And we look at what we have before us where, you know, civics for all cur curriculum in a mm -hmm. few years, we're all going to be mandated to teach it. But New York City Kid Rise ties into that, those financial literacy lessons. Mm -hmm. When a child can say, this is what I need, this is what I want, where I have money. My community last year in April, there was a large fire where 25 of my families were displaced. And one of um, one of the hunger hero in New York one was from my school this wow. year. Shout out to my cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, we fed thousands of families mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis in Jackson Heights because we were the epicenter mm -hmm. of, the, of the virus. And I have students that were victims of that fire but and one student if you look it up in new york one he said it when everything else in his life changed that was a constant and these are the things that that this program does and we have to do it for them because we are their advocates so that possibility that exposure and that attainable future for kids who know nothing of what can be because of what they're exposed wow. to i mean i have families that live for three, four families in one apartment. Mm -hmm. they, when they can see that there's so much more there for mm -hmm. them and we can offer that, it's worth every effort, every day, and everything we have to do to get that to them. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, I, there's so much you said that I want to, um, makes me think about a lot of things, but one thing I want to pull out for the group is that truly we have been meeting with their, their college savings liaisons monthly for five years. Mm -hmm. This has been a co-creation process. This has been an investment. And so parent literally, parent coordinator, coordinator heroes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that this has been the feedback, the input, the what should this look like in each school community, which is again, you know, Ms. Jaggins community is very different than Ms. Hernandez community is very different than, you know, other communities. So it's yeah, just it's um, been a very, very important, important. So for all you sort of school leaders out there, well, the first thing I would do is appoint a college savings liaison that you really trust and that is really going to work with you closely to make this happen and um, make sure that they're able to really attend these professional learning sessions to really be a part of this so that you also can have this back and forth feedback with us. Um, all right, back to you. Um, I think, Ms. Hernandez, I just want to ask you one follow-up question that is, that is a little related, but we are about the citywide, all of us here, are about to be to be a part of the first ever scholarship month across New York City. Now, for those of us in District 30, that ha scholarship month has very special meaning for us. I hope I can speak for, for the group here. Um, and so what that is going to be is that's going to be the first time ever that the families across the city in kindergarten are going to be able to activate these accounts and see that they have this, this money, as I talked about before. Um, that is also when the money tree, again, pictured in the back, your schools will be getting this money tree in the next few weeks. Um, that is when you guys will be able to put that up and start using it. So, Ms. Hernandez, I was just hoping you could talk a little bit about the, the, your experience with Scholarship Month over the years and the money tree. Well, I'm going to be honest, when that sign came in, the first thing as a true leader, I said, where in heaven's name am I going to put this? <laughs> <laughs> what wall? But um, the best place for it is that door where the kindergarten students walk into the building. And yeah. so, pre, uh, you know, pre-COVID, our kindergarten our parents walked them in and walked them out. So it was a daily reminder of like, oh, yes, I have that. That tree is there because of me. So every time we get a report, we just kind of say, okay, like we announce it on, on mm -hmm. the daily announcements. It's in writing. We put our leaves up. We change the money amount. We put it in digits. We write it out to just really try and make it like, what does that look like? What does that feel like? But it's that daily reminder that they are creating and building that tree. And so what Mercer Hernandez is referring to is we actually will be sending you regular updates so that you will know how the money is growing in the scholarship accounts for all the kids. And so um, that is, you know, the idea of this adding money into, you know, activating and viewing your own account, taking additional steps. That's a very individual action. But this is all about, again, as we we're talking about this collective, that people like me do this. Like we are a school community coming together and this money tree is hopefully a symbol of that. What I think I'm gonna do is now open it up for any questions. We have more questions that we're prepared for, but did wanna give anyone an opportunity. Let's just get you that microphone there. That microphone. PS92, give me your mic, I'm PS92 sing. is here <laughs> from Corona, all right. Um, one of the insights at PS92 that was really relevant to us, and a lot of parents were very always concerned about their, their citizenship status, and they were afraid that this would lead mm -hmm. to problems. 
and we had to work really hard at letting them know that it was not going to be a threat to them. Mm -hmm. And once they got that, then we had a, a lot more buy-in. So mm -hmm. to any school that is going to be working in that kind of a situation, know that you can tell the parents they're not gonna be in any danger. Great, thank is you. Like an investment? So they put, oh sorry, they put the money in, but then do parents have to continue to contribute? How do they earn money? Great, thank, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. So um, the way it works is that, again, unless a family doesn't want it, everyone gets an initial $100. This is invested in uh, New York 529 that NYC Kids Rise owns. NYC Kids Rise owns it so that it doesn't affect public benefits and it doesn't affect immigration status. Okay. Families cannot put money in this account. Only NYC Kids Rise can add money into this account. This is called the NYC scholarship account. Okay. So what we're all talking about here, uh, like Ms. Geller just said that PS166 has over $80,000, that is really in the accumulation in this NYC scholarship account. Families also can open up their own accounts. Okay. This is something that schools are not, you know, we, we will host workshops, NYC Kids Rise, and financial empowerment centers will do other activities, but this isn't something that, you know, is on sort of on your plate, but it's something to be aware of, because it's like, it's the money that NYC Kids Rise puts in for their, initially, okay. it's families can open up their own account. Now, when families take additional action, such as viewing and activating their accounts, which you all would be a part of working with them on, right, doesn't require social, doesn't require any personal and other identifiable information, financial information, um, they can open up their own accounts, they get another $25, they put their first $5 in their own account, they get another $25. So it's NYC Kids Rise, the family's accounts, and then it is something, and I'm gonna turn this over to Ms. Jag in a moment, it is something called community scholarships. And Ms. Community scholarships are ways where other, other entities, other organizations and foundations and other can add money into sets of students' accounts. And so, um, PS 111 has um, the highest economic need in our in our school district, though there are there is tremendous economic need throughout the district. Um, and so, Ms. Jagger, maybe you want to talk about how you've heard from fam families. How can I do this? That I don't I don't have money to save, you know. Sure. But yet at PS 111, there's already more than fifty thousand dollars in 111 children's accounts. Right. Thank you, Governor Ellen. Yes. So, Community School 111 is located in Long Island City. And we are 100% free lunch, one of the most impoverished schools in the district. So one of the things I always tell my colleagues and I tell all the principals, you know, they say, oh, we don't have time for partnerships. You, you, you have to have time for partnerships. So um, we had two local churches who decidedly took upon themselves to make um, Community School 111, a couple of schools in the neighborhood, part of their work for Black History Month. So they hosted a gospel concert. Hezekiah Walker was there, and I know we all love Hezekiah Walker. And um, he came to perform. Over a thousand people attended. And um, through that concert, all of the money was donated into the accounts. The children got an additional $18.86. Um, we also have several partnerships, and you know, thank you for the little plug with the president. But you do great work too. <laughs> and, um, not president work. <laughs> and and we love seeing your post about you know PBIS and academic excellence. But when the president came, we spoke to him about financial literacy and the power of community partnerships. Um, Sterling Bank also partnered with our school, and um, I try my best to make sure that I'm making connections, working with other partners, so they see us, they understand our financial need, and they donate. They donated an extra hundred dollars into every student's account. So as a principal, there's some work there to be done, but all you have to do is show up, communicate a need, communicate an interest. People want to give, and um, I, I think it's incumbent of us to make sure that happens, especially when we know we're teaching. As principals, as teachers, as leaders, part of our work is to teach. But it's not limited just to reading, writing, science. No, we have to teach the importance of saving, the importance of um, community school, com the importance of money. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot negate that when you go to college, you're going to need some kind of financial backing. That's a must um, in order to have the conversation. But how spectacular it is to have a five-year-old says, I already have money in my account. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is so powerful. I didn't have it. You know, my parents didn't have it to give to me. When it was time for me to apply to college, I applied to one college. No one has anything to say. Only apply to one school. <laughs> I didn't know any better. My parents didn't know any better. But I got into the school with St. John's University. Mm -hmm. I got lucky. Yes. 
St. John's, right? Class of 1999. No math right now, but yeah. So, um, so when. <laughs> So now they have choice. Yes. Um, choice is an important part of education. So now they have the money in the accounts, and you should know that the money can be used, of course, for tuition, but like Deborah Ellen said, it can be used for books, transportation, their food account. The money can be used for anything associated with higher education. And it's important that we do this work. So keep partnering with other organizations. When you speak to them, mention NYC Kids Rise. You'd be so surprised to see where they would like to put their money. And um, it makes the, um, the organization grow. It started off in District 30. We thought forever that it would be just us. <laughs> and it was so interesting to see Dr. Compasso <laughs> say his dream to have it in all the districts in New York City. Yeah, Here we is. are. Here we are. It's Here in are. every single district. So as principals, principals that are in here, or even someone that's close to the principal that's in this room right now, you have to be very visual in your thinking. When you're doing your workshop, set it up where all of the laptops are out at every table. Make sure you come with your rockles. Everybody knows what the rockle is. Okay, make sure you come with your rockle so you have your student's OSIS number, the correct spelling of their name, their birth date. Make it easy for the parents to activate the accounts. Think of every meeting you have as an opportunity to increase the amount of money in the accounts through the activation. That way it becomes exciting in the school. And that's something that we've done. Yeah, and that's, I think, just a very important point. That first step of just viewing and activating and seeing you had it, it's another $25 into the scholarship account. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to, you know, it's highly leveraged. So it's, it's something that it seems, again, sexy to kind of think about all the fundraising, which we also will do and we'll work with you all on. But even just working to get the basics in place, the foundational steps is like the most important. Um, what other questions are out there? So, so once we get the New York City Kids Rise, we have to solicit partnerships. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think that um, over time there'll be more conversations about that in the out years around how we can think about how to be more connected to other places or connections you already have. But really. And, and there may be sort of more citywide efforts. So for example, we, we worked with the Met, uh, MetLife Foundation, which Ms. Hernandez talked about, and that was you know, a targeted effort to the schools who are most, the school communities who are most impacted by COVID, and so that's where that went. So it will be some that you might bring to the table in time, really, I would really just focus right now on setting up the basics, um, but then there will be some that can be potentially from the city or from us or from other places. Of course, only if you want them. This is not. This is not about if you don't want them. Deborah, if I could add, I think Please. right now, like what she was saying, think about of just celebrating getting money in the school. Like mm -hmm. have get piggy banks, you know, or do something like a recycling project. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, Zayam said about making it um, easy for the parents to sign up, like having those rockles, having everything there, anything that you can do. Um, food always helps, you know. If at lineup you say every morning we're gonna be by the or at dismissal, we used to do that at dismissal. Now when the weather got warmer, like there were tables out there, so we came out there and the kids were so involved, like I'm saving for college and some schools um, made piggy banks from bottles and other schools bought them and they drew them because I think right now for those, for the rest of the city who's starting, it's just about putting that out there, like add the logo to your, to your, um, to your letterhead, to your emails, let everyone know that this is part of what you're also buying into and that we're here to support. I think that's the first step. Mm -hmm. And the corporation is amazing about supporting, amazing about supporting. So that's definitely a goal and where we want to go in the future. But right now, if my first advice to anyone would just be that, like make that part of your language in your school, especially your kindergartners, let them know because they're gonna be your selling agents mm -hmm. and, and just make it visible anywhere that they're gonna be and the siblings. Because what we have a lot is like, oh, can my fourth grader, my fifth grader, be, no, it kind of started here. I mean, we're now up to our fourth graders yeah. are in, enrolled since, and they started as kindergartners. So mm -hmm. if you think that half of our schools, if not 90% of our schools are currently involved in the program, but 
that would be my suggestion to everyone is just to get the language in there so that people don't say what is it but oh we're also mm. what, you know this is what it is I would say it starts from um, kindergarten orientation. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. have a slide in there and then with a date for workshop already on there. And then during the workshop, the initial workshop, mm -hmm. I have uh, people that are uh, translating, not translating, but doing the workshop in different languages with laptops out and mm -hmm. rock goes out so that they feel comfortable and they're coming with food and just uh, mm -hmm. doing it right then and there. Mm -hmm. It's just getting, getting people right. right. Mm -hmm. yep. And I, I want to actually piggyback because, like, when I was talking before, I'm talking about, again, a program that we've had in our school for five years, oh, yes. right? So it's, yes, yes. it's already fully developed. But one of the things, like, I was thinking back to something that we, do, that we do that I take for granted that we did on the first year was my buildings are pre-K through five. So what we did is my kindergartners actually created piggy banks in art class, which I believe is the piggy bank that's on your New York City Kids Rise folder. <laughs> Plugged, PS84. Right. There it is, there it is. Just throwing it out there, yep. Um, but what we do is the kindergartners make that, not for themselves, but for the pre-K kids. Wow. And then what happens is my pre-K, at pre-K graduation, they get those piggy banks, and that's when the conversation starts. So the parents know that when they go into kindergarten, that they're gonna have this scholarship account and the kindergarten kids like made it for the pre-K kids. So it's just like a little thing that's kind of cute and mm -hmm. it's the things that like, you know, I'm thinking back to like way back when, yeah. when this was brand new. Yeah. So yeah. that's just another little piece of and it. it. Right. But I think we're coming with five years of support in growing mm -hmm. the program and, and perhaps we apologize for that, but the first year it was, there were a lot of meetings and it was monthly meetings and there were summer meetings and with the parent coordinator and it is a lot of work and, and we have that folder every month. Like we were <laughs> we like, love that at folder. the end of the year, like we have that, how many folders mm -hmm. do you have? I have 10, I have 12, you missed a meeting. <laughs> but you know, I think that we were all there and you know, we don't wanna like um, make anyone feel like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Like we did this together as a district. Yes. And we celebrate Dr. Compasso because he, he bought that to us it was part of one of our monthly meetings and it was part of every meeting and we still talk about them mm -hmm. yeah. and even though Deborah only gets three minutes to talk to us <laughs> um, and she's signed but it, it was a it was a district effort so it, it yeah. is there, there's just a lot of stumbling blocks but that's why um that collaboration and networking your parent coordinator is key your community programs are key and and your fellow um your colleagues in the district because it, it became a common language for us but we're, we're talking about five years supportive work. Um, year one, we were there like, what now? And like I said, when that sign came, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's there and it's still there. <laughs> Uh, Miss Harvey. I just want to jump in. First of yes. all, yes. kudos to my colleagues who have done a fantastic job yes. on the panel. And thank you to Deborah. I just want to say um, to everyone out there, I cannot underscore enough what it is to have kindergartners having conversations about careers, having conversations about money, mm -hmm. financial literacy. Many, you know, mm -hmm. pro I, I, this started my first year as principal there five years ago. Yeah. But the kids having these conversations, taking that home to their parents mm -hmm. and encouraging them. So when mm -hmm. we hosted the chancellor, we had like, all these parents yes. that showed up out of nowhere. Standing room only. Yes, because their children were telling them mm -hmm. about the career uh, mm -hmm. path with the financial literacy curriculum mm -hmm. and the money that they would be able to mm -hmm. save. And I mm -hmm. also just want to um, give a, a huge shout out to Kids Rise because we were also like 149 part of the epicenter. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the biggest supporters yes. of our school community when we went through so much. Yes. So I thank you even beyond the, the account. I cannot underscore that enough. Yes. So thank you, thank you. It has been a great partnership, and I'm so excited about the years to come with the program. Oh, so yes. thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Oh, I'm an echo um, and I, I just want to acknowledge Ms. Harvey for her five years, and watching your leadership in your community has also been a true inspiration to me, and what you mean to your school community. It's been an honor. I've had a lot. Of, I've had a chance to spend a lot of time there, and it has been a pleasure. So thank you for that. I think we have a question. Let's, yeah. And so, you mind just introducing yourself, too? Hi, my name is Dr. Marilyn Brown. Um, I'm from PS154, District 5, yes. new to the district. District 5, yes. So I do MSK. It's a big deal to me. My sister's keeper is my Beautiful. heart and soul. Um, and financial literacy is a humongous thing for me, especially how I grew up. With that being said, I know that sometimes families need incentives to come to SLT meetings and IEP meetings and PTCs. Is that 
um, do you recommend like some financial incentive for those things so that they the money can go into the accounts? How does that work? Is that even allowed? I don't. I mean, we've always had just food and yeah. student <laughs> yeah. just yeah. food and student <laughs> celebrations. Like yeah. anytime they came in to celebrate their students, we never really. I never did. But I don't yeah, think no, we yeah. do. We have food, student of the month, things like that. Like I said, we ran a raffle for principal today, AP for the raffles, day. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think for us it was about making it easy. So we always have workshops right after arrival. And then with foods, uh, with you know breakfast food, right? Mm -hmm. So they just wait a little bit until we get situated, and they are allowed in. And we've had food, and we've had people to help, and then they get some financial incentive through New York Kids Rise, um, and the children, right? Just right. signing in, right. yeah. So that's the incentive, and use their children. The children, when they're speaking to their parents to get them into the building, into your workshop, it's so powerful. Get them to send out invitations. Get them to talk to the parents. Get them to bring them in um, by communicating with them. Right. Mm -hmm. Just to add on to that, I think one incentive that we did have is to give them like a super. We have a PBIS system superhero tickets, so that we would give it to the parents yeah. if they came to the workshop, and the parents would give it to the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and it would be more than a dollar. We would get five points or something yeah. like that. We've given out a hundred scholar dollars if your parent attends, and they can go shopping. Right. In the in the school store, so in comparison to the school store, though, can that be transferred into the school account? I think what know. you're raising is a very innovative question, and I think that um, well, I'm going to just re 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 like say the question in sort of our lingo. So how I'm hearing it is, is there over time an opportunity now that you're going to have um, all of your kindergartners next year? You'll have all of your kindergarten and first graders. The year after, like you know, our crew here, we're we're K through four, mm -hmm. and so are there creative ways to figure out ways as an incentive to add more money into the kids' accounts by engagement from parents? Exactly. Okay, and so. That is so cool, and like we would love to work with you over time to really think about how that could be done. And my sister's keeper might be the right container for that conversation, and so maybe we can make sure we get your information once. And and I would say though the basics right now, so to all my colleagues here, is getting the basics Done, right. Yeah. But that is like next level, and we are all for the next level. Thank you for that question. Right, thank you. Um, so we only have about five more minutes, so we are going to wrap it up, um, and we're going to wrap it up with like like rapid fire parting <laughs> words from um, the crew over here to just say, you know, what is your one piece of advice? And we're going to start with you uh, over there. Okay, so I would say the the one piece of advice is um, get a team, get a solid team together. I don't think it should just be the college liaison, mm -hmm. right? right? It needs to be a, a group of people that work together with that person. Uh, and it really should be like centered around your kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. Get a team, perfect. Get a team. Uh, I would say your that as a school leader, your voice matters in all of this. Your voice matters. All right. Yes. Yes. Um, show up. Use your students. Get your students to know what is in it for them and that possibility, and they're going to spread the word for you. Uh, mine is train your office staff. Teach them what to look for. <laughs> Kindergarten parents, when they see them, when they hear them on the phone, ask them, is your account open? Let's do it now. Beautiful. Train them what to look for. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> this was so wonderful. Yeah. Applause to all the panelists. Thank you, thank you Ms. Harvey. Thank you, Ms. Geller. Thank you, Ms. Ray.